Okay, my yarn friends, is my camera crooked or am I crooked? Yeah, I still don't know. Um, hello, my crochet friends. Are we ready to do a yarn haul today? Because I can't help myself. I love to go to the thrift stores on the weekends with my husband. And he likes to go to the electronic section. I like to go to the book section. And now it turns out most of my thrift stores have a craft section arts and crafts section that will have some yarn so and I know this for a hand like some of my thrift stores but not all of them so I still um I still go shopping for books even though I probably have more books than I than I have room for in my house um so I've also been looking for for yarn and I'm looking for vintage variegated yarns uh, they are they were not afraid of color combinations back in the day. Um, <laughs> and so I, I know that it can be scratchier yarn because it was made a long time ago and it sat for a while, but I still, I have such a soft spot for vintage variegated yarns. Am I finding stuff that's newer than, than vintage? Yeah. And if it's in good shape at the thrift store, I will pick it up and I will bring it home. So, Hi, my name is Jenny. Welcome to Granny Square Peg. It is a channel where I am, I went through a yarn purge and yet here I am doing a yarn haul. Uh, um, I'm going through my project pile one blanket at a time and figuring out if it needs to be finished or if it needs to be frogged. And then we do informal crochet alongs in the meantime. So hi, welcome if you're new here. Um, to everybody else, <laughs> let's do some yarn, right? Um, I have a hot cup of tea and I want to drink it while it's still hot um I had actually just sat down and filmed the video and I did edits on it and it's now in the computer doing a thing called rendering so I'm trying to find my flow for this video I would I want to show you the yarn that I found at my local thrift stores um I did go to Michael's I was looking for crochet hooks because I found a hook that I really like and I wanted to see if it came in other sizes so I have some new yarn and I want to show you the squares that I've made in the meantime since the last time I did a catch up with me this is how many squares I've done video and then those baskets from Jada and Stitches I want to show you the baskets that I've made so these yarn purchases are in no particular order and I will um if you're in Bucks County Pennsylvania Lower Bucks County I go to Good Stuff Thrift in Langhorn I go to Salvation Army in Langhorn Fairless Hills um Goodwill in Langhorn um Second Avenue Thrift in Langhorn um I don't live in Langhorn I live outside of Langhorn but that's where all the thrift stores are and Habitat for Humanity which I go there for furniture. I go there for kitchen cabinets. I'm looking for a tub, um, but they have a book section. So I go buy books there. And thanks to you, Sue, because I didn't, I didn't even know Habitat for Humanity had an arts and crafts section until the last time I was there. I was picking up my kid from work. They work at the pet store. And there was a little bit of time between the time I got there and the time they, they were getting out. So I went to, um, to Habitat for Humanity and I found some Premier Puzzle yarn. They had it all wrapped up because there is four skeins of it. Right. And this is this is these are big skeins of yarn. So there we go. There's four of Premier Puzzle yarn. So I don't actually know too much about it, but I mean, you can always use more neutrals in, in your yarn sash. Um, you know, we should always have just a good selection of neutrals. Um, so it's a number five bulky weight. Its color is called Crossword. Oh, an interesting color name. It is seven ounces, 200 grams, 328 yards, 300 meters. So I don't know, is that a good amount of yarn? Can you get a lot of stuff out of that? What do you guys do with this? I know, Sandy, I know you've been, you have been using the Premier Puzzle yarn, making baby blankets, I think. Um, so what would you guys do with four skeins of Premier Puzzle? Let me know, because it won't fit in with my patchwork squares. 
So um, they were $2 a piece. And I think that is a really good deal. I think this stuff is what, $10 in the store. So $2 a piece for each skein. And my Habitat for Humanity. I had no idea. It's the first time I've ever seen yarn in there. And I've been in there since because I got this weeks ago. I've been in there since and they they do have some some very old yarn that is solid colors and it's not what I'm looking for, but I had no idea that they that they had this kind of stuff at Habitat for Humanity. So there's my first bit of yarn. Okay, what do I have here? Did I write notes on any of it? I did at some point. Okay, yeah, all right, good. Um, I have this system when I bring books home from the thrift store, I go through my receipt and on a post-it, I write down the name of the store, the date that I bought it, and how much I paid for the book. Because I want to see how long the books are sitting on my shelf before I read them. So that's my post-it system for every book that comes into the house. So I started doing that with my yarn from the thrift store. So I've, I've been writing little post-its and putting it on the ball band. So there we go. I found this at Good Stuff Thrift on April 6th. And I paid $1.25 for this one and $1.25 for this one. No, I think that's a good way to keep track of the yarn to make sure that I'm using it in a timely manner so I'm not just shopping, shopping, shopping and adding and adding and adding and never using it. So April 6th, that was my husband's birthday. I <laughs> knew we spent the whole weekend doing thrift store things and hanging out. So this is Burnout Softy Baby and I have a bit of this in my stash. Uh, I've um, I'm trying to get as much together as I can because I would love to make a patchwork squares blanket out of a number three light with baby colors. I think it would be really cute because there's a lot of variegated baby yarns. So um, I don't know if this is a full skein. I should stick it on my scale and weigh it. Now, it's been partially used. The, the middle section is completely gone. So it's been partially used. So it's a four ounce skein. I'd say there's maybe half of it is gone. But for $1.25, I mean, that's not bad. And its colorway is, oh, that's just stupid. It's called Her Jeans Ombre. I like the color though. And then, of course, a very, very vintage Karen Simply Soft. I haven't seen this green label with this green print and font in a long time. It's called Country Blue Ombre. And look at that. I haven't seen this in years. But it's new. It's still I can I can tell and I can I can feel the middle. It's still all all new. So it's a number four medium weight. It's five ounces. 142 grams. So this will go into our Patrick Squares blanket. Nice. Ah, let me put my post-it back on there. This next batch of yarn, I found it at Second Avenue Thrift again on April 6th. It was the day I went out with my husband. I found this little um, canvas basket. I paid $3.99 for it. I should take the price tag off of it though. Um, so I thought it was a good little basket to put some yarn in. Yeah. So at Second Avenue Thrift, I found some Red Heart Super Saver for $3.99. The color is Ocean. I don't know if they still make this color. I've seen this color before and I'm pretty sure I've used it before, but I don't know if they still make it and sell it. It is a Adorable. I love the shades of blues and purples. A little bit of a, I don't know, is it got a little bit of a sea glass green in there maybe? Or is that just more of a blue that's got yellow undertones? I don't know. But it's adorable and I love it. And it is a full skein. It is new. It's still all there. Okay. So that's, this is going to look really nice when I work it up into patchwork squares. All right. 
some more Red Heart Super Saver for $1.99. And it's called Primary. Okay, hold on. There we go. Red Heart Super Saver. Color is Primary. There's the thrift store tag. Um, I'm loving these muted shades. It's got red, purple, green, blue, and, and a kind of a goldish color where red went into yellow. It kind of created like a goldish, orangish color. I don't know. That is nice. I don't... I thought primary was the brighter colors. I wonder if this has got the wrong label on it. But again, it, it's new. I can, I can feel that it's new. It hasn't been used um, because it's still all, it's all stuck on the inside. It's all tangled up in there. Do you guys know about this color? Have you seen this before? Because I, I don't think I have. Um, it's probably one of those colors that they made it, released it, sold it, and completely discontinued it right when they released it. But yeah, I, I'll have to look into this one because I like that one. And now this one is completely random. And it's got nothing to do with nothing. But it's loop yarn. Have you guys used any of this stuff? Where you use your fingers to draw the loops up? To do a thing? I mean, I don't even know. How do you use this? Oh, uh, here, I'm sitting here playing with it. So it is from Lime Brand Yarns. It's called Off the Hook. No tools needed. It is 100% polyester. There's three and a half ounces here or 100 grams. It's, it's not, it won't be a lot of yardage. It can't possibly be a lot of yardage because uh, it's specialty yarn it's a uh, fun yarn but these loops right I thought this was a good way for my cats to be able to play with yarn but not actually eat the yarn because this is so thick and it's so loopy it, they could still play with it but they wouldn't be able to eat it at least that's the theory anyway I mean my cats are pretty stubborn so what do you guys think have you have you ever used any of this and not used a hook and just used your fingers. I don't, I have, <laughs> it can be so, so texture driven sometimes. I, I just sit here and I just play with it. I know, right? Completely crazy. It's fun stuff to play with, I'll tell you that. I, you know, the cats can use it as a toy. I can use it as a toy, you know? I have bought this stuff over the course of weeks since my last yarn haul video, so I've lost track of when I bought it. But it doesn't really matter when I'm sitting here talking to you. So you guys just grab your projects, whatever you're working on, and just sit and crochet while I talk, okay? So again, I found another bag at the, at the thrift store. It's got these little polka dots on there, and I thought it was perfect. It's a little tote. I thought it was perfect to carry yarn around in. Like, I'm not one of those people who typically put my projects in a bag, but I think I'm becoming one of those people. <laughs> so this was at, um, where was I? Good Stuff Thrift, again. <laughs> yeah, all right, hold on, hold on, what's in there? Let's go with this one. I have... All right, so Good Stuff Thrift is doing this thing now where they put the price tag on there and then they put a piece of clear packing tape so I can't get that off without ripping the yarn label. So I'm just going to leave that yarn label right there. This stuff is called Sensations. A soft self-pattering yarn so it would make up its own little pattern, right? It is 70% acrylic, 30% nylon. It's three and a half ounces, 100 grams, 404 yards, 370 meters. It was originally sold at Walmart for $4.99. Me, I spent $2.99 on it. 
So there's the Walmart label, there's the thrift store label, and the label for the yarn itself is underneath of all here. So it is a, it's a number three light, but it's, it's on the thin side of being a number three. And that's the thing with yarn. Your yarn can be a number one, two, three, four, five. Okay. But then there's, there's different degrees of thickness, even within the weights that you can get a number four that's a bit on the thinner side and a number four that's a bit on the thicker side and then you get that number four medium that's right in the middle that's perfect right so even with the number threes they're like that so with number four medium worsted weight Aaron weight um karen simply soft i find that to be on the thinner side of a four um red heart with love i find it to be on the thicker end of a four and then there's just plain old Red Heart Super Saver that is right in the middle. So even with the number threes and twos, so this is, while it's a number three light, it feels very thin to me, but I'm loving that color. It will go well with my number three lights and in the baby colors that are variegated. So I can make a, a second blanket with patchwork squares, but in baby stuff. So that was at Good Stuff Thrift. That's what this whole bag is from Good Stuff Thrift. There is Burnett Softy Baby in this blue. Oh, this blue is so adorable. I, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it is marled. And marled is, um, it'd be like two strands of blue with two strands of white that are all twisted together. So it is marled. But it is so subtle. See if I can get my camera to focus on that. So Burnett Softy Baby, it is number three light. The color is, where they give a number and a name, Baby Denim Marl. Yep, it is 100% acrylic. And then in, in parentheses and quotes, it says gentle soft. Now it's five ounces, 140 grams. Um, it also has, see, it says sport DK. Here's another thing. Back in the day, a number three was not called light at, or light worsted. It was called sport. And when it was done in baby colors, it was called baby sport. Now baby sport nowadays on our yarn chart is a number two. So there are times when I'm talking about a number three light weight yarn that I will still call it sport or baby, but that's only because that's what it used to be called back in the seventies and the eighties, but they've changed the yarn chart since then. But this label right there, it's an old school label. It says sport and then it says DK. DK means double knit. That's what ladies in the UK call a number three. So I love, I love the colors on this. Very soft, very pastel, very baby boy, you know? And then we have a Burnett Softy Baby in this, um, little speckles. A little bit of blue specked in there, a little bit of green on that white background. I absolutely adore this. Oh, its color name is called Funny Prince. And number three light, 100% acrylic, 4.25 ounces, 120 grams, 310 yards. And I paid $2.99 for it. This color is adorable. I love this. Do they make this anymore? I don't know. I don't think I've seen this color before. It's got Ellie the Bear on the label. I remember when they did this to their labels years ago. Ellie the Bear. Don't remember what it was for, but I remember them doing that. Still more Burnett Softy Baby. They had a lot of um, BB yarn the day I went to Good Stuff Thrift and I bought all of it. So more baby yarn in this um, self striping that they've got going on. So it's just four ounces. I spent $2.99 on it. Its color is covered up by the label, by the price tag from the thrift store. Yeah, I can't tell you what color this is, but I love this. 
blues, greens, and, and peach into pink into yellow. Oh, I love that. I um I will sit with this with my hook and see how long the color changes are. If they're too long and they give me self striping, then I probably won't put it into my Patrick Squares blanket when I get around to making a baby version of it. Okay, um, I'll probably find something else to do with this. But isn't that adorable? All right. Last okay. So where in there did my camera cut off? I have no idea. Did y'all see the end of this one? I hope so. Hopefully I didn't. Hopefully I caught it quick enough when my camera shut off. Um, Red Heart Baby TLC. Right? In a colorway that is uh, two shades of blue, two shades of brown, one shade of brown. It's cute though. I, I, okay, so like they put the price tag over top of the color, but if I'm seeing this on this one, it looks like they called it Snooky. And then this one had two different prices on it, $1.99 and 99 cents. So they couldn't make up their mind. And then this one says $2.99. Um, the girl at the thrift store, because she didn't know what to do, just gave them to me. She didn't know how to ring them up, so she just gave them to me, which is really nice of her, and it's really nice for me. So again, it is a number three light on the yarn weight chart. There is... Well, they're saying to use a G. I always think Gs are a little too big for a number three. So 100% acrylic. Um, four ounces, 242 yards. So there was two skeins of it. I can get plenty of patchwork squares out of that because I do plan on making a patchwork squares blanket in baby weight yarn. Okay, so yeah, I got one, two, three, four, six skeins of yarn. And two of them they gave to me because they couldn't figure out why there was three different price tags on there. Right? Well, up with six of them from Good Stuff Thrift. I mean, this was a good yarn haul that day. I love the name of the thrift store, Good Stuff, because, yeah, we actually find some good stuff in there. So all of these yarns, I am going to try and get that price tag off from the thrift store. So I can keep the yarn labels for when I go to use it. But if not, I might have to sacrifice the yarn labels and just get rid of them. Just maybe take a picture or stick them in my computer or something. So now I get to put all that in my stash and then the the number four medium weight I can start working that into squares because I love making patchwork squares and granny squares and corner to corner squares. All right, so let me um let me put that away and then I will show you the baskets that I made, okay? I forgot. I still had that box that I got from eBay. And then when I had gone to Michael's, ah, oh, I forget my head if it wasn't attached. So this box, I was I was scrolling through eBay and I and I do it every couple days because I am looking for certain colors that I really do like. And I'm hoping somebody somewhere has it in their stash and they're looking to get rid of it. And that melon berry color from Red Heart Super Saver. This color. I had one skein of it in my stash that I bought years ago. And when I worked it up into squares, it, it is so cute and so adorable that I've been scrolling eBay. And finally, one day, it shows up and a lady was selling three brand new skeins of it. And then she added in a fourth skein of Red Heart Super Saver in light raspberry. This light raspberry has been in my stash not this particular one, mind you, but this color has been in my stash since the 80s when I started building a yarn stash. I have always had light raspberry. It is a good medium shade of pink that is toned down and not in your face. It is a very good shade of pink and I have used it so many times in my crocheting career. 
So four skeins of yarn, all brand new, in perfect condition. Um, it's clean, it doesn't smell, there's no pet fur, in perfect condition. And for what I consider to be a fair price. Like I've got this 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 number in my head that for certain yarns, like anything that's like um, maybe two or three ounces, I won't pay more than $5. These are five ounce skeins, I wanna say, and I won't pay more than $10, you know. I found Red Heart Super Saver, the, the Christmas one, Holly and Ivy. Some, somebody selling it for $25 for one skein of it. And I'm like, wow, that, that's too much. So I consider this to be a fair price for three skeins of melonberry and one skein of light raspberry that I've always had in my stash. It was a fair price set and, and it's boxed up nice and it came quickly. And there's a little thank you note in there. It says, thank you and enjoy your yarn. Love this melonberry color. And then she signed it my seller signed it from eBay. This was so cute. I really appreciate this. So I've got three brand new skeins of Melonberry. I will share them with you guys. Just give me a little bit of time to sit with them and call them my precious <laughs> and keep them in my hoard for a little bit and then I will share them. Okay. And then last I went to Michael's because I was looking for more crochet hooks that I really liked and I wanted to see if they had any more on the shelf and then I walked through their yarn section just to see if they have any more variegated yarn that I haven't found yet or bought yet and I found this their loops and threads soft and shiny the color is pick a color pick a color oh uh, they just called it party multi it's just a bright rainbow color and they're soft and shiny, which is um, similar, their, their version of Karen Simply Soft. Okay, so I picked up two because that's what I've been doing. I've been buying one for myself and one to share. Um, just right now, I want to keep them all on my shelf and then I'll share them. So from Michaels. And then Loops and Threads ha <clears throat> has this, what are they calling it? Carousel Twist. So it is, it's marled. It turns out I like marled yarns. So its base color is white and they've got some, some taupey brown and then they've got some peachy color. Ooh, excuse me, <clears throat> drank my cup of tea too fast. And I really like that. Um, and then they had it in this peach color, which I want to use this to make another basket because I have some peach on my shelf that's just solid peach and I thought they would really go really well together to make another basket. I'm actually going to sit and start on that today because here I've got this peach from Hershner's and I think they would go really well together. So this one while peach is the base color it's got a fuchsia, some green, some white, some yellow and a bit of blue. Look at that. It was the last skein of this on the shelf. That's why it's all, all messy. And they were selling it to get rid of it. It was a really good price. It was like $5, but they only had one color and I, I'm not so sure this will be enough for a basket. And this has just enough peach in it that it will round it out. So that is the last of my yarn haul. And then give me a minute to put this yarn away and then I will show you the baskets that I made, okay? Okay, so now let's show you the baskets that I've made, okay? The basket is from Jada in Stitches. Jada's channel is way older than mine and she's been doing videos for a long time and she's good at it. She's good at explaining her patterns and that laugh of hers, it's infectious. Even, even I watch Jada, which I don't watch a lot of other crocheters Hold on one second. Don't people know not to text me when I'm filming? I don't know. So well, where, where was I? Jada. And it, she, there's a, a video that she did um, making um, a crocheted basket with three strands of yarn and a really big hook and 
all the yarn that she used for it was variegated yarn, which is probably why it showed up in my recommended feed to watch because I've been watching a lot of, um, trying to watch uh, other people and their, their variegated yarns and what they're doing with them. Okay, I think most of them need to come over to me and watch me so they can do something with their variegated yarn since most people don't know what to do with it. So anyway, Jada was making a, 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 a basket and it came out really big and it's perfect for holding um, all those little leftover balls of yarn. So I made, I sat down with this three quarter pound yarn that I got from eBay and Red Heart Super Saver in Soft White and this... Um, mill ends that my mom sent me. It's red in color. So I held three strands together. It was my first time doing that with three strands. I've made a blanket holding two strands together, but never three strands. And then I used a size N, which is a 10 millimeter hook, since I was holding three strands of number four worsted weight yarn. And the hook is from Susan Bates. It's a really nice hook. I like how long the shaft is here because I move my hook a lot when I'm crocheting and I like how long the handle is. I like this grippy texture and it was a pleasure to work with this hook, which leads me to the hooks I went looking for in Michael's because I found this at Michael's for like $3. So this is what I used to make the basket and this is the basket. So it's got that variegated color. It's got the soft white and it's got red and here's the bottom part. You go and you make a circle, eight single crochets, and then the next round is 16 single crochets, and you keep increasing until you get up to 80, 80 single crochets, and then you do a row of back post single crochet to create this little ledge here. It lets you know that's the bottom of the basket. And then you work up to make the walls of your basket. And then at some point you put in some handles and I really enjoyed making this. It only took, when you sit down and do it from start to finish, it takes a couple hours. But since it was my first time doing it, it took me a day or two because it's also holding your yarn tripled and using a bigger size hook than most of us are used to. So my hands got a little cramped, but I really enjoyed making this basket. I had a lot of fun with this. So what I did was, is um, I just was watching Jada's video and just wrote down notes on what to do. And so I didn't have to keep going back to the video because I can't always have my computer sitting on my lap. And then I, I made the rest of the basket. Um, color wise, it's not quite my color palette that that makes me super happy. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go through my stash of yarn and ball up some yarn of variegated and probably some solids and fill this basket up and then probably sell it to probably one of you guys. Um, so that's on my list of things to do. This basket is huge. It's going to hold a lot of yarn. And then while I was in the process of making this blanket, when I was only this part, this far up, the cats were laying in it all the time and they looked so adorable. So I'm like, okay, well, I can just do 20 rounds and it would make a perfect cat bed. So I made a cat bed next. So I did this one back in early April, um, around the third, fourth, fifth. So I made this in early April. And then about a week later, I made a bed for Arlo. So I still used three strands of yarn and I still used the N 10 millimeter hook. But the yarn I used was, even though it's a number four medium worsted weight, it's, it's, it's on the thinner side, okay? So the basket came out with more flow and drape to it. <laughs> so here we go. Here is Arlo's little bed. So here's, here's the bottom, right? It is up to 80 single crochet. And then there's the back post row. And then for the wall, instead of going up 30 rounds for the wall. I only went like 10. So Arlo can have his own little basket. Check out these colors. It's, it's three strands of the same color yarn. Okay, I didn't use three separate colors. Three strands of the same color. And then I even put little handles in there for him. <laughs> and he is so cute. He does, he will lay in it 
and then it flattens out the the side does not stand up very well i have to find a way to reinforce it so it'll stand up but yeah he'll he'll lay in it he's so adorable um you know i have a picture in my phone i have proof that arlo has laid in his little basket bed okay hold on i have to scroll oh wow uh okay there we go <laughs> it was at night so it was a little dark in here so you know because it's eight nine o'clock at night and we're watching tv or something so there's arlo on his little cat bed and look at him so arlo blends in with the color of the yarn that i used which blends in with the color of the floor right how cute is that You know what that is? This is what my life has been like the last week. Oh, and then here's Arlo laying on my lap. This is my Patrick Squares blanket on my lap, and this is Arlo laying on my lap. He never, he is not a lap cat. I've been working with him for years to get him to lay on my lap. So it turns out it's my Patrick Squares blanket. That's the trick. So that's a that's a one-time thing so the yarn that i used for arlo um where did i put it here this is um stuff that my mom sent up to me it is Patton's decor there is the label she originally bought it at ac moore it is not 100 percent acrylic it is 75 percent acrylic and 25 percent wool and it's got a good texture to it. Um, the wool is not too much and it's not scratchy like wool can be. Um, it's 100 grams or 3.5 ounces. And its color is called woodbine. So there were four skeins of this, four full skeins. And I held three of them together and I used most of the skein. I have this left over. This is the 0.5. So I used three ounces of each skein and these are the leftovers and then this fourth one that I never touched so there we go that's what I did with Arlo's right we find a place to put this so I can grab another one because I made bandit a bed too so bandit's my cat that's usually not on camera too much like he's here with me he's he's a, he's on the chair to my left um, it's a brown chair that we have and we call it bandit's chair. Now we can sit in it But only one bandit's not laying in it sleeping is that's where bandit likes to sleep is in his chair. So I did I think I have the same amount of rows going up with bandits or I might I might have made it a little taller All right, so there's his colors for him it is still a number four medium weight and it's it's worsted yarn it's 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 acrylic it has no wool in it again this came from my mom there was um three balls of this and it turns out this is not variegated yarn it's two strands held together it is a strand of that taupey brown and and an off-white okay so two strands already held together all i needed was to add a third color i used Windsor Blue from Red Heart Super Saver. I had some leftovers that looked like this. It was just a floppy skein, right? I had leftovers, and then that's all I've got. This is um, Royal Blue. Ah, this is Blue Suede. So I had two options to pick from, and I went with the darker, more earth tone shade of blue. And using that, that two strands from my mom's, so there is bandit's little bed now i have no pictures of bandit in his bed yet because he sits in it and he like he's standing up when he's sitting in it you know um and then he'll walk away so he hasn't actually slept in it yet and then arlo's been <laughs> arlo's been using it so while it's bandit's bed arlo's been using it so i made one big yarn basket for yarn from jada's pattern and then i made two cat beds and I think they came out adorable. I, I really love the shade of blue from Red Heart. It's called Windsor Blue. 
I really love this and I'm, I'm not so sure that they make it anymore, but it's another one of those old vintage colors that I just absolutely adore. Yeah, so there, there's bandits. <laughs> so I do have enough with these, with this shade of blue, with the blue suede, I do have enough to make another, another basket. I don't know if I can make it 30 rounds tall, but I could make another one. Because I got to tell you, Jada wrote such an awesome pattern or did such a, an awesome tutorial for that, that it, it is it is very addicting to keep working on baskets and making another one and making another one and making another one. They are so easy to work and they are so quick to work up. I, I absolutely adore it. So now this, because even for all those, I still use the Susan Bates, my new hook that I bought specifically for that. My next one, I used number three, light yarn, DK weight yarn in baby colors. So I didn't use the N 10 millimeter, I used J. What's a J in millimeters? I don't know because this hook was made before we started using millimeters in the United States. It's a J because I was using a number three light yarn and I just still did use three strands together you've got this 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 is gorgeous this did nothing but make me smile the whole time i was working on it you guys ready check out this basket look at those colors how gorgeous is that? Is my camera not focusing on that properly? Is it too close? So this one, I um, did I work all the rows and all the numbers? I think I still shorted it a little bit. I'd have to check my notes. I do have notes on it. So there's the bottom part where you just increase and increase and increase. And then the row where you do the back post single crochet because it gives you that little lip to let you know that this is the bottom and it should be flattened out. So, but this basket is just so adorable. It's so adorable. I made this with the Burnett, is it Burnett? Burnett Baby Sport that I got from my mom in these big skeins, right? 10 ounce skeins, 300 grams. How many yards? Give me some yardage. Um, 1,077 yards and 984 meters. So this is a big, big skein of yarn. And it's a number three light. So I used this color right here, which is green, pink, white, and that taupey brown. I used that color. And I held it together with this color, which is pink, purple, green, and white. Um, as you can see, there's no yarn labels on there, so I can tell you that it's Burnett Baby Sport, but I can't tell you what color it is. And then the third color was this one. It's blue, green, and white. So these three yarns held together and made this awesome awesome crocheted basket so i am going to use this crocheted basket and put some baby yarn in it it's so adorable so i mean this is this is how much i've got left the basket weighs six ounces so i used two ounces of each color which means there's still eight ounces left in there and i did because I wanted to see how cute these little leftover balls of yarn would look in there. So I, I rolled these up and I put them inside and it is so adorable. I don't know. I don't know if this is coming across very well. Oh, so I did change Jada's pattern just a little bit because I wanted to get some height a little more quickly than all those single crochets around and around and around. So once I got to a certain point here, I, I did one round of half double and then back to single and then half double 
back to single and I alternated for about 10 rows before I went back to singles, did the handles, okay? But this, I had so much fun making this one and I wanna make another one in those colors because they are just so adorable. Look at that, look how cute this is. I'm gonna fill that up with all the baby yarn that I have. So cute. Okay, so real quick, that um, this crochet hook that I had found at Michael's that is made by Susan Bates. I really liked the way it fit in my hand when I was working on that basket. So I wanted to go see what other kind of bigger hooks they had. And that's their silver loom edition hooks. And I found um, the letter M and it's a nine millimeter. And it's from Susan Bates. So it's got the, the aluminum hook with this handle and look how long that is. I really, I really enjoyed this hook. So I went out and bought some more in different sizes. So that's the M, which is a nine millimeter. And then the I, which is a 5.5 millimeter. Okay, I know I need to take the price tags off. And then the H, which is a five millimeter. I'm looking forward to using these because I, I have been having a lot of um, hand fatigue holding my hooks from back in the day because they are actually very short. So even though the Susan Bates is it's only what, like half an inch longer, maybe a, a quarter of an inch, but that makes a difference in my hand, okay? These um, hooks I grew up with, they, they hit me a lot right here these don't so I, I bought some new hooks and it's been a long time since I've since I've bought new hooks but I'm getting older and my hands are getting sore so then of course while I was buying new hooks I found a set of scissors for cutting fabric because I do have a fabric bin but I don't have fabric scissors or scissors right for fabric so I bought a pair okay that have a little angle to them and then of course this little snippy pair to cut your yarn this little one for embroidery it's from the michaels brand loops and threads and then there was a little pair of snips in there i don't typically use snips but i like the i like the little finger hold right there and i like that it has a little case so yeah i bought some new new scissors because you always need more right Okay, um, let's take a small break before I come back and show you a, a random project that I was working on. Okay. Yeah, all right, I, um, be right back. Okay, so I have another random project for you that I was working on. So we've done a yarn haul of stuff that I picked up in the last couple weeks. I've shown you my new hooks, a uh, new set of scissors, um the crocheted baskets that i made um i also i need to be writing down notes like so i can do a video on how hook sizes have changed and how terminology has changed like with the yarn weights and how in the u.s we do letters and numbers and we don't do millimeters although we are now but so i need to be writing down notes as i go along because it's stuff that i often it's just it goes out of my head, right? So I have a lot of notebooks around the house because um, I love notebooks. I love planners. Uh, I, I'm always writing notes to myself in random places. So I have this little itty bitty notebook, right? But I love the paper on the inside of it because it's just like a composition notebook. But it's got this, 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 blue and brown plaid design that I don't really like, okay? But I thought it'd be a good idea, a good place to write down thoughts about, like here on my first page, it's crochet hook sizes, all right? I wrote down in the US, like the, the smallest size hook is a B, 
and it's a number one and it's a 2.25 millimeter. So I started writing it all down. Okay. And, and how, um, this was printed in a leisure arts little, uh, crochet pattern pamphlet in 2003. So it is 21 years old and it's what hook sizes look like. Okay. Um, like they have the, the F at a 3.75 millimeter. They have the G at a four millimeter. And yet the G that I'm working with is a 4.25 millimeter. So things change over time, but I really didn't like the cover. So I'm like, you know what? I've seen um, videos where ladies take fabric and they do quilted covers for their notebooks, right? To make them pretty. I'm like, well, I'm gonna do that with yarn. I'm gonna do that with crocheting. And it turns out it's not a new idea. There are other people who do it. So I made myself a crocheted cover for my notebook. And it was just a random thing. And I, here's my note to myself. I started it on April 9th. When did I finish it? I don't know, a couple days later, I guess. <laughs> My notes are very scant. <laughs> okay, there's not much on there. <laughs> so, um, I just, I wanted it wide enough to cover the front of the book and the back of the book. So, I used Arbor Rose from Michael's Loops and Threads Impeccable. The color is called Arbor Rose. I used Joanne's Big Twist Value in the color Ivory. And I did, I alternated every two rows. Yeah, so this is uh, my first row and then two rows of half double crochets. So like this is my chain and then I changed colors to here to the white and I did two rows of white to a pink. You see where I'm going here with this, right? And I, I cause um, pink is one of my favorite colors to work with. All my yarn tails are still sticking out. I did not sew them in yet. So this was the perfect size. It goes perfectly around my notebook. Ready? It's actually a little big. I've got a little bit of room. Okay, but it does and it'll fold. So I made myself a notebook cover. And then what I did was is I wanted um, a different color on the inside to create a flap so I can tuck in the cover of the notebook because you need your notebook to have a little flap, okay? There it is. There we go. So I did a flap in uh, um, Hirschner's worsted yarn in their peach color. And then I did a flap for the back, for the back part of the cover. And then for the border, I used big twist value from Joann's in their happy rainbow variegated color. Yeah, so I made myself a cover for my notebook. I think I have it on there upside down. No, I don't, I got it right. So I used half double crochets, just like I'm doing with my um, patchwork squares. And I put the cover in there, see? And so, yeah, it wound up a little big because see with crocheting, like when you do your first, when you do the initial starting chain, your chain can be the perfect size, you know, but when you work the first row of stitches, it either gets drawn in a little tighter, so a little smaller, or you crochet so big that it comes out bigger and looser. So I had worked a chain and it just wasn't right. It was either too long and then I did it again, it was too short. So like this is my third or fourth variation of it. So I couldn't get it quite right, but I got it, it was just enough. So if I put my notebook dead center in the middle, the flaps are still in there, okay? And it's still in there in the back. And now I have a place when I need to write down notes about what crocheting looked like in the, I can't say the 60s, I wasn't born in the 60s, I was born in the early 70s. But between the time I started crocheting um, in the 80s, to today, how things have changed. So there is my notebook cover, right? Uh, it, it's so adorable and it's so random, I know, but that's what I did. And I just, I laid it out to see if it would fit. And then I, then I worked and it's just, just like, it was a whole thing, but it was fun to work on and it was a random little project. So these are the yarns I used on it. This ivory color from 
big twist value which i really do i really enjoy the big twist value in this ivory white that they have it's a good color some older version of loops and threads this is an old label impeccable i found that at the thrift store for $1.99 the color is arbor rose and it's a color that i like to keep in my stash it's a good shade of pink i like it so i use that and then the worsted eight yarn from Hirschner's in their peach color in their light peach because they also have a medium peach yeah that happy rainbow color from big twist in the variegated so i made myself a notebook cover so a yarn haul some crocheted baskets some crocheted cat beds and a notebook cover that that's that's what i've been doing these last couple weeks so now I can put all this yarn away. So I showed you all of that. I do have to get my little darning needle out and sew in my ends. And what I was thinking, since my notebook cover, it there is a little bit of room here. I can always just grab some cardstock. I have some cardstock to make this a little longer and a little wider so it'll fit better. But I made myself a little cover from my notebook. I know it's completely random. All right, so I am actually going to end this video here. I said I was going to show you all of my Patrick squares, and my granny squares, and my corner to corner squares, but I've probably done enough talking for today. So I'm going to end it here and I will come back in a couple of days and show you the squares that I have made because I've, I've made a lot of squares. So that's got to be a video all by itself. And then we'll, and then I will count up all the squares that I have and let's do a, a dry run let's do a test fit let's lay them all out on my big king size bed and see what they all look like together so we know what we're working towards okay some people need to see a visual image so they know what the goal is so you know i'm gonna i'm gonna do that um you know how much i love sitting here and talking to the camera but i am exhausted i need a nap <laughs> I need a nap. Two videos in one day. Uh, you know, I really do appreciate you guys being here and the comments and all the love. And you guys are awesome. I want you to keep being awesome. Okay. And I will chat with you down in the comments below. And hopefully I will see you in a couple days. Bye.